This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. We're going to talk more about that, but before we do, I want to talk about his old tag team partner, Sean Michaels, as reported in the observer that you and Vince sat down with Sean on December 14th. Do you remember the context of that meeting where Sean's mindset was at the time? I mean, this is still a ways away from us seeing the big return at SummerSlam 02. Uh, so December of 01. Was he in a good headspace? Was he working towards it? Did you think, Hey, maybe there's something there, or was this a frustration point for you? I think, uh, Vince and I both were the same mindset that we wanted to salvage this talent. Vince always felt like Sean had a lot of Vince in him, defiant, headstrong, uh, so forth. And I always just thought the world of Sean because, you know, we got, he got his start working for cowboy and, and uh, when I was in mid South, because he was a, the, uh, protege of Jose Lothario, who was a much respected guy. The cowboy really, really liked. So when Jose said uh, to cowboy, I got a kid, I want you to book. I remember, I remember getting, seeing that call. Uh, Bill said, well, I don't, he said, well, we'll send you a picture. You know, do you like him, Jose? Oh, he's going to be a player. He said, he's a, he's a, he's a future star bill and cowboy took the word of Jose and hired him sight unseen. And then he put him in the car with the rock and roll express to learn how to be a baby face, how to travel on the road and all these things. So we did, we did a, a lot of good stuff, I think. And of course it took about 10 minutes to see that this kid's a natural. Yeah. He's doing things that he should be doing in five years, psychologically the crowd psychology and so forth that I'm referring to. So, uh, Sean always had a special place. You know, I've made more than one trip to San Antonio to talk with him and he got, and he, but here's the thing, Sean got paid. Well, he was getting paid while being off. And that was how we kept him in the, in the, in the, in the same locker room, so to speak. So, uh, we both wanted Sean to see the error of his ways and how he treated people. And I think that was a lot of that was just because of maybe the influence of, of, uh, uh, pills and alcohol, you know, that's, that was always, he always had that, that devil on his shoulder that was kept, uh, tapping him. So I don't remember the meetings, all the specifics, but I know that Vince and I, uh, were both of the mindset that we would be better, a better team. If he was on our roster and that's what I sold so Sean on. I don't give a shit. If you ever wrestle again, it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that you don't kill yourself, that you don't overdose, that you don't make more enemies and, and get out of that space where you are miserable. And, uh, that's how we approached it. And then finally, after enough visits to San Antonio and, uh, talking with Sean and his lawyer, uh, who I got to like too, uh, you know, we had a little spot, we would go to lunch and, and we'd laugh and tell stories and all these things. And I always kept telling Sean, I said, you know, uh, the talents look at you like a God. Yeah. I mean, it's either who's the best. Well, it's flair or, or Sean Michaels. Yeah. That's where you are, Sean. I don't know if you didn't even like being there. But that's where you are. That's the role you have right now. The talents love you and we love you, but we gotta, we gotta get rid of some of these issues. And I think, uh, about that time, it seemed like Sean's social life was getting better. Yeah. And uh, I also think that, uh, him going to church and, and really being meaningful of going to church, not just as a symbol that I'm changed because I'm religious. Now I'm a Christian. Uh, we, we weren't, we weren't there. That was his deal, but I sure encouraged it. You know, you gotta have some, you gotta have faith and you gotta have, you gotta have a, a, a mindset that we're, uh, going to church is a part of your week and you're studying and you're reading and you got a good pastor and they see the challenges you have. And by having those meetings with Sean and his attorney, who was also a very religious fellow, uh, it helped my cause. 
Skip was the guy's name. God dang, I can't think of his last name. Nice man. Uh, and uh, he helped us in that respect to get Sean off that road he was on into a, a more positive uh, lane to drive in. So, yeah, we had, look, Conrad, we had a lot of meetings with Sean. This one you're talking about here, I don't remember all the specifics. I just remember the general mindset. And, you know, and he seemed to be really, Sean liked to screw around with events. Yeah. He liked to, to bust his balls and make it challenging for him and all that stuff. So, uh, but I, I'll say this at the end of the day, it was all well worth it. We got Sean. Can you imagine how good he was to come back after that long, uh, absence and be as good as he was at the highest level? pay-per-view main events. Uh, and he, he got his, I don't want to say he got his smile back. That's been used too much. I think, but he came back and he was, uh, absolutely phenomenal. I had no idea that he would be as good as he was. And I also give credit to triple H of triple H is his dancing partner. Yeah. And they put on a hell of a show, man. So. At the end of the day, by doing the right thing, having a little patience, maybe more than a little patience, uh, we got our man and Sean has contributed to the WWF WWE ever since. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.